<laughs> enthusiasm. Um, so as you can see, none of us are in costume right now, even Lindsay, because um, my organs are sick of wearing a corset. Uh, Lindsay is, she may change into hers halfway through the day is what she said, because um, we're gonna go back to the, we need to go back to the hotel to like finish packing and check out. Um, but we literally are getting in, we're getting in line for a panel, then when we get out of the panel, we're getting straight back in line for another panel, and then we're staying in that panel, for a third panel and then it's three so we have three like back-to-back -back panels um so Lindsay was like there's no point in wearing my costume just to sit in a dark room for like four hours but um we woke up at like seven i think i got out of bed at like 7 30. um we're in line we are way closer than we were before the entrance to the con is like up there like you can see the entrance whereas before we were on the complete other side of the building so getting here we got here an hour and a half before <laughs> the convention opened so we got here uh like an hour before an hour earlier than we did yesterday 8 30 and yesterday we got here at 9 40 so and also it's like sunday so i feel like it's not going to be as busy although catherine tate is her panelist today and is filling up bless you um uh but yeah it feels good to like be in like regular clothes oh i got this shirt um at the con the first day and then, Linz, you should shed the back. It has the hole in it. Aww, so oh, cute. so cute. Thank you. Um, and yesterday, because uh, I didn't really vlog at the Hard Rock, but we went to the Hard Rock and then got drinks, and then we went upstairs because we wanted to find a table so we could actually like eat some food. And we were just sort of like awkwardly standing around, like because there was loads of people just like sitting at tables, like not. They weren't like leaving, they weren't doing anything, they weren't eating, they were they were just like there. And I was just like, okay. But these uh, these two guys invited us to sit at their table and they were really, really nice and so that was cool. We made new friends and we got to order food and, um, and then we stayed till midnight, which is when the hard work closes anyway. And then we went back and crashed and I think we're all pretty dead today, like in terms of exhaustion. So it's actually kind of good that we have a lot of panel stakes, which just do a lot of sitting. But yeah, it should be fun. Oh, and the panels that we have today are, um, we're going to Nathan Fillion in the morning, because we didn't get to go yesterday, Catherine Tate, and James and Oliver Phelps. Okay. That's a lot of roads. <laughs> <laughs> Because the way he treats women is really nice and interesting. Thank you. I had come up with a bunch of backstory from Malcolm Reynolds uh, that in episode, I think, two or three turned out to be totally wrong. <laughs> um, so I don't know if, if he had ever had sisters. The way I uh, dealt with it was, uh, once again, a little piece of my past. I had a job interview when I was in 10th grade. These two women were interviewing me, and the last question in the interview was, if you get this job, we would be your bosses. Do you have any problems taking orders from women? And I said, my mom's a woman, I take orders from her all the time. <laughs> Did you get the job? Has there ever been a role that you've done that you've 
done a big yeah. physical transformation for it, like a full metal jacket, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio transformation? I'd say probably Serenity was probably the, uh, the best shape I've been in in my life. You're welcome. <laughs> Private Ryan, they, they gave me an option. We're gonna cut your hair. Do you want it like a, like a trim that can function in real life, or are we going like flat top all off? Let's go. I said, Well, what's, uh, what's Tom Hanks doing? <laughs> all off. I said, All right, let's do that. Hi. Hi, Lori. First of all, thank you for being Captain Hammer, Captain Mal, Captain Everything. Captain <laughs> <laughs> What was your, speaking of all your parts, what was your one white whale of a part that you never got that you always wanted? Oh, uh, I know, I really, I try not to think of it in those terms. I mean, if you, if you, if you knew how many auditions I have had in my lifetime versus how many roles I've had in my lifetime, you'd be shocked. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of, you, you'll go into an audition and they'll say, hey, he's, he's great, he's too tall. And the next audition, he's great, not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's never something that's within your control, unless you just blow your audition, which also happens. Um, I, I try to do a great job in an audition and then just let it go after that. Um, have there been roles that uh, that have kind of slipped through my grasp that maybe better handled? The opportunity would have been yes. There have been those things. Do I want to share that information? Probably not. It would probably just be the worst thing to do to the internet and to those people responsible. <laughs> so there is a white whale or two yeah. out there, but I try to pretend that they're more like skeletons in my closet. <laughs> It's true though, as an actor, you spend so much time, you know, people look at look at you and they think, oh, he works all the time, all he does is work. But it, there's always the process of getting the job and the audition. Exactly and, right. And I'm, uh, uh, take Castle, eight years of a show, take that out of the equation. I've spent more of my career unemployed than I have employed. So my job, my real job, is looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> That's the job. Uh, but if you're voice acting, you don't have to worry about what pants you wear to work or anything like that. <laughs> hair and stuff like that. Unless they got a camera on you, which is not what happens. They put a camera on you too, it's like, oh man. <laughs> but I did recording for Cars 3. Guys, I'm in Cars 3. <laughs> and I came in there kind of disheveled and they had a camera and I said, oh, it's, I didn't know. It's, 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 oh, don't worry about it, it's just for the animators. The animators watch your face when they animate your car. And I don't know if you've noticed, I talk out of the, I talk out of the right side of my mouth. <laughs> I, I talk, I'm super hard of hearing in my left ear, so I talk to the ear that can hear me. <laughs> um, my car does the same thing. <laughs> I talk into the right fender. <laughs>
ya. to learn some sort of like aerial skills doing it and uh, the first time I did it I actually thought I, I was so scared I didn't even have enough sort of like strength to tell them to get me down and I just thought I'm actually going to just be up here for the rest of my life until they noticed I've not appeared for rehearsal and, um, I got, I, I loved it so much that in the end I was like 10 somersaults and it became a massive, uh, I conquered that fear and that was a good thing for me. Thank you much, Shane. Thank you very much. Oh look, we've got one last thing. We saved the best for last. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been 15 years, last November, 15 years since the first Harry Potter film debuted. And when you, when, you at, <laughs> when you look at clips like that from the movies and, and you think back, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Like, how do you, how do you even, you know, 
reconcile that? The first thing I think of for the first movie is, wow, my hair was, my hair was a funny haircut. <laughs> and then I think, oh no, my voice was really that high. <laughs> that is the interesting thing about, like, doing such uh, a franchise that spans over so many years while you're growing up. You guys were 14 when you started, right? Yeah, we were. So it's, um, it's amazing when you see, I suppose, a lot of people in their early teens that want to be reminded of it. You guys have saw that, like, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, most people use, you know, Facebook as a catalog of, you know, the years, and you guys have these movies, which are incredible to look back upon. <laughs> All right, where are we next? Hello, okay, up here. Hi. Talk into it. <laughs> okay. Um, if you guys could bring back one book character that we lost, who would it be and why? Well, wow. Fred. <laughs> I know. You said it couldn't be? Yeah, because we all want him back. That's <laughs> Well, this got deep very quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, Hedwig? <laughs> Voldemort. I want to see <laughs> um, Yeah, why not? Have another seven films. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hi. My name is Theo. Um, my question was, if you, what inspired you guys to start acting? Mm, what inspired you guys? Oh, good question. Um, oh, yeah. To be honest, we... we it's something we always like to do, kind of just in school or something like that. Um, but to actually go for the parts of the films was simply because we could possibly be in in one of the films like Harry Potter. Um, so that kind of got us going. But then when we're actually acting, I guess what inspires you to do it is to you're, you're surrounded by so many of the great actors and actresses that you want to kind of raise your game to be like to be like them and kind of put out the best production you possibly can. Thank you. Do you want to be an actor? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually my dream job. Well, good oh, luck to you. Awesome. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Question is, if you weren't casted into Harry Potter, where do you think you'd be today? <laughs> If you weren't, if they weren't cat, well, they wouldn't be on the stage right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably be tackled by now if and I got to the stage now. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of those questions I where I, I think if you think about it too late at night, it will keep you awake. Um, I, I honestly don't know. It changed like most of the cast. It, it changed our lives beyond anything. Did you have like a dream job before? Like a dream job before you? Uh, when we were, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a fireman. That's good. <laughs> so that's that's what I did. I asked um, I asked Judy Walters about it, like different methods to it, and so it was more a case of obviously making it relatable to yourself first of all, and then literally going straight from dressing room onto set, not talking to anyone. And you get on set, and I was told it was going to be a close set, which basically means it's the director cameraman and the actors, that's it. Get there, no, it's a full great hall day, loads of people. And um, so that's one thing, getting into it, James is on the floor having a sleep. And a <laughs> uh, makeup girl comes up, comes up to me, with like, I thought it looked like a lipstick, but it's actually eucalyptus spray. And so I'm like, trying to get in, you know, trying to keep up with that uh, motion. And <laughs> in my eyes, so I'm, I'm crying for real at this point. <laughs> And then we, we shot uh, like two or three takes of this thing of me rubbing like a little girl. And then, uh, yeah, we went to lunch and James stayed on the floor asleep. <laughs> I was still in character. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Oh my gosh. Um, I was wondering what was the funniest uh, blooper or mess up you had while fin filming the movies? Ooh, well, there weren't many because, one? well, we're professional, so... <laughs> <laughs> there was one when, in the fifth movie, 
when the room requirement is discovered. And the shot is, they kind of pan from everybody and it's like a long shot and it goes through everybody's on the faces. And there was Oliver, myself and Rupert standing there and we were like the last in the shot. And it pans over and then also I just hear Rupert just go, <laughs> <laughs> So then I start going like, <laughs> so like Yeah, it sounded like Beavis and Butthead by the end of it. And then, <laughs> but then it kept happening, like every time they would do the shot, they would go through and then you just hear one of us like, <laughs> so eventually, I think they ended up just shooting us first and then just getting them. <laughs> We're all pushing the trolleys through, and so you've got your supplies for the year, so you've got your trunk and all of the little things. And Oliver and myself and Rupert had rat cages. And we told Oliver, yeah, they're animatronic, you're fine. And Oliver puts his hand on the rail, and this thing takes a little nibble out of his finger. <laughs> No, 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 you're decorating this story. <laughs> I've right. never seen someone basically, with such a low this... voice have such a high squeal. <laughs> <laughs> this rat jumped up at me, I pulled my hand away. Da, 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 da. The bit James is failing to mention is that a bit later on, I'm standing there and I just see this thing get put on my shoulder blade. <laughs> James and Rupert are walking away laughing and I've got this rat there. <laughs> yeah, I could say a horrible word right now. But <laughs> I'm plugging in my phone because uh, my camera ran out of batteries, which is frustrating because I had full batteries at the beginning of this weekend. Um, but anyway, so we went to the Catherine Tate panel, which was absolutely phenomenal. Like, oh my god, it was so like it was funny, and she like didn't actually have an MC; she just did the whole thing herself, and she like pulled people up on stage, and it was it was so cool. It was like probably one of the best panels I've ever been to. Then we went to James and Oliver Phelps. Um, who are the Weasley twins, which was also really, really good. They're just like really chill, really relaxed guys. So it was very fun. And then we went back to the hotel and, <laughs> excuse me, we went back to the hotel to finish packing and check out. And we walked in and we all just kind of stopped and we were like, it smells like weed in here. Like, cause we live in Colorado. We know what that smells like, right? Um, and so we were like, okay, well maybe the girls next door because uh, there was like some girls next door that came home like the other night and they were really loud so we were like okay maybe they, they smoked or something like that um, and they're non-smoking rooms but it, it, you know people do it and um, we, we so we came back and we, we sold that and then I went into the bathroom and because um, I really had to pee <laughs> and when I went to wash my hands the sink was coated in ash like it was and we like I called in like Emily Lindsay we all looked at it, we were like that's not makeup, like that's ash. Like it was green and black. Like it was totally ash. Like, and it was clean. Like Emily said she used the brushing right before we left and the, the sink was clean. And like, we were like, there's nothing that we could have done that would have caused that. Like, um, maybe I'll like insert some pictures because I took some pictures of what the sink looked like. So we were like, did somebody like come into our room and smoke weed and just leave? <laughs> Um, and uh, like all of all of our stuff was like still there and everything, so it, it was uh, Emily. Lindsay got stopped. Um, all of our stuff was like still there and everything, so it was fine, I guess, in that sense. But we like went and told the we went and told the lobby staff or whatever the, at the checkout desk about it, and they kind of were like, "Huh, that's interesting," and it kind of seemed like they might have had issues or something in the past or like have some sort of notion, I don't know. Anyway, that was weird. But uh, Lindsay changed into her Rapunzel costume for the last part of the con. I didn't feel like, feel like it. I'm really happy just kind of being in normal clothes. So we're, we're heading back to the con just for um, this book signing that I want to go to and just to kind of do our final uh, Artist Alley like merchandise shop, which we usually do Sunday night. So yeah, it should be fun. So we're back on the expo floor. Um, we're just waiting. Uh, it's about, the signing starts in about five minutes or something like that. Me and Lindsay bought some cotton candy, but I'm like not eating it until afterwards. So I don't have like purple tongue. We just went and bought the book. They didn't have the first book anymore, which sucks. I, they had it yesterday and I wanted to buy it yesterday, but I just didn't want to carry around two books in my costume. So I bought it, to, I bought, they, they had the last book, so I bought the last book, which I already have on Kindle. I mean, I already have them all on Kindle though, and I haven't read it yet, but I mean, this way when I reread the series, like I have it on Kindle, but I'll also have the copy. But all the copies they had were already, all the copies they had were already autographed, you know what I mean? So it was, I was like, 
oh, well, I'm going to get an autograph. But I was like, eh, she can personalize it and like autograph the front cover maybe or something like that. But anyway, I'm excited. Um, the author is, her name is Marie Brennan and the book series is um, the uh, Lady Trent uh, memoir by Lady okay, Trent and the Lady Trent memoirs, I don't really know. But this is the last one. It's uh, called Within the Sanctuary of Wings, which I haven't read yet. Um, because it came out in April and I pre-ordered it on Kindle, but when it came out, I was reading the King Killer Chronicles, which I finished earlier today. I will finish the entire series isn't finished, but I finished the last one. But these are really good books. The first one is called um, A Natural History of Dragons, um, and it's it's legitimately really, really awesome. So I'd highly recommend them if you like. Fantasy. Hey guys, so I should not be vlogging right now because my phone has like 30% battery, but a lot of shit has happened. Um, so I'm gonna try to like catch you guys up real quick because I have a long drive home. So as you can see, there's an Amanda behind me. Um, and basically, I Mandy picked up, you know, we were in the art show together. So Mandy picked up my painting for me. So I went over to her apartment to get my painting from the art show um, so I could drive it back uh, with me because I said I would pick it up this weekend because I was going to be in Denver anyway. <laughs> and I get to the apartment and I text Mandy, I'm like, I'm here, I'm next to your big ass frat boy truck or whatever. And she, she comes out and I'm standing there and I look at my car and I'm like, I have a flat tire. Like, when did that happen? Like, I don't, I don't realize that this happened. So luckily I have AAA, so I call AAA and they put the donut on, which is great, but the tire is totally destroyed. So I'm trying to figure out how like to afford to pay for two new tires or like minimum two new tires or whatever. And then also like the AAA guy was like, don't drive more than 50 miles on this tire. And I was like, well, I live 60 miles, like 75 miles away. I have to get to work tomorrow. But I called Roger and I called my dad and they both said that it should be fine to drive on like as long as they don't go over like 50, 55 miles an hour. So it's gonna take me forever to get home. Like it's gonna take so long for me to get home. It's it's unreal. Um, so I was just like with Mandy and we we're like sitting in her truck waiting for him to change the tire and she was gonna go to like Target or Walmart. And I was like, screw it. I'm gonna go with you because it's been a while since we talked and it's apparently gonna be a late night for me again. So I was like, oh, I, I, I was like, my brain is just, I, I've been trying so hard. Like I'm the kind of person I get emotionally overwhelmed really, really easily. So like what normally would have happened in that situation would have been, I should like, I really should have at some point started crying and like been like, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. Like, this is it. you know, like I, you can attest. Cry. Yeah, you can oh, attest. I like so I get, no, you don't. You can attest that I get super emotionally overwhelmed yeah. really easily. And I was trying so hard to hold it together. I was like, be an adult. Just take it one step at a time. Just call AAA. You can deal with this. You can figure it out. Call your daddy. Call Roger. Like, and so I have oh, Beauty and the Beast underwear. You guys, how cute is this? $4.96, I want it. Get it. I legit might. Anyway, so I was like, I'm just gonna go to Walmart and like de-stress. So I'm at Walmart with Mandy now. I'm probably not gonna vlog until I get home now because like I said, my phone has a low battery and it does not charge very fast in my car. And I do not need to be driving on a donut with no cell phones. So yeah. Bye guys. <laughs> oh wow, that's not good quality. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so um, it's 9.53, I'm about to drive back. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get home until midnight or later and I don't think I'm gonna be able to find parking in my apartment, so yay. I just wanted a really night. Anyway, Mandy's laughing at me. <laughs> Love you. Um, so we're gonna drive home, please pray for me. Let's hope we make it back. If I'm dead and like the emergency rescuer workers are watching this, um, I'm sorry. And uh, I've verbally given out my will to various friends. So, and like my mom and Monique can like have my art supplies. Okay. <laughs> okay guys, so I made it home. Um, I also just remembered that I forgot that my like camera likes to cut off the beginning of sentences So hopefully that hasn't happened too badly throughout this vlog Anyway, um, or my phone does I have never been so exhausted in my entire life Like I seriously was considering 
pulling over onto the side of the road and sleeping on the side of the road. Like, I am so tired, so I am going straight to bed. So, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow.